has the big Charleston contest. I am uh, Stefano. I am an Italian man. You've reached the house of unrecognized talent. AstroTurf. You know who's responsible for that, don't you? The Jews. <laughs> oh, the Jews hate Chris. They always have. I think it proves you're all daft. I suppose we'll get into trouble for saying that now. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. From New York City to Dickens, because we're number one! All people, everybody's continually searching for love. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the Jews steal our money through the Zionist-occupied government and use the black man to bring drugs to our oppressed white minority community. You're not going to open with that, are you? Yomo Aragato, Mr. Scotto. You never get it right, do you? You're either crawling all over them, licking their boots, or spitting poison at them like some benzedrine puffhead. Just trying to enjoy myself. <clears throat> okay, we're back, and um, I have an idea next time what I want to want to talk about. Um, I should be teasing that, but I'm not. I've teased in the past, and then I don't end up talking about what I said, thought I was going to talk about. Um, anywho, <laughs> I, I might talk about something from popular music. And look at it through a theological lens. Let's <laughs> put it that way, very broad, uh, broad brush. In our short time today, I want to revisit uh, this issue with Israel um, because coming, um, I'm seeing it on social media, particularly one social media site. And again, I don't have a lot of follow. I don't have a lot of followers on anything, um, and I don't interact too much there. But I do read it. Uh, it's Gab, and the reason I went to Gab. I think I was I was one of the early adopters of Gab. It's when when I think Twitter started really Twitter put me on Twitter jail, and I couldn't figure out why. And I got in Twitter jail a couple of times. And I, I honestly, you know, what they were telling me was if I was reading. Go, how is this offensive? Right, but Twitter was getting, um, as we know, um, very uh, strict. Well, in one way, you know, they were, they were restricting free speech in so many ways. So I went over to Gab because that's what it's, well, Gab has now become a haven of Jew hate. Let's just say it. It's just a haven of Jew hate. And again, that's the short version. And let me flesh that out. I'm just not going to throw it out there and just go, oh, you're a bunch of Jew haters and that's the end of it. No, it's not. I'm not saying that. Um, <clears throat> and you see this on, on the other social media as well. But Gab has just been overrun by Jew hate. And again, I've talked about this on trying, not trying to make the moral equivalency, and they'll say that there are some Talmudic, you know, and I don't support Talmud, <laughs> but some Talmudic communities that do call for violence against Christians, or, and they certainly do spit on Christians. We've talked about that. And again, I just think that the moral equivalency is, is extremely dangerous. But uh, to, to, and we've talked about that, so I won't go into that into great detail specifically, but uh, let me pull the lens out a little bit. There's a guy, Rick Wiles. And he, he's got a lot of followers. I think he's reformed. Um, uh, so, because I, I, I used to know a lot more about him because I used to see more of his videos, but I kind of blocked a lot of stuff. Uh, but people post his stuff. So this I saw, this actually wasn't on Gab, but I'm sure it's all over Gab too. I didn't see it on Gab. doesn't mean it's not there. Uh, but he was saying that you can always tell who, oppress, who the oppressor is by, or whatever his term was, by who you're not allowed to criticize. In Nazi Germany, you couldn't criticize the Nazis, which is an irony, by the way, since a lot of his followers are Nazis, <laughs> self-proclaimed Nazis. I'm not calling them that. They love Hitler, uh, literally love Hitler. Um, in Soviet Russia, you couldn't criticize the Soviets. In North Korea, you can't criticize Kim, uh, Kim Jong-un or Il, which everyone's currently there. <laughs> um, anyway. He's comparing that to criticism of Israel, which is insane. It's just absolute insanity. Uh, the, the Most of the major CNN, the major media in this country, uh, legacy media anyway, New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, and many other major newspapers criticize Israel a lot. They publish Hamas, um, basically propaganda. And we know with the, with the story that came out in the New York Times, and maybe I'll put up the graphic here of how New York Times stealthily went back and changed their story. That headline, Israel bombs hospital, kills 500. 
or whatever it was. And they stealthily changed that one more time and they stealthily changed it again. Well, the story was it was a wayward rocket. It uh, wasn't aimed at the hospital, but it was a wayward rocket from Hamas that ended up in the parking lot and some people were killed. But it wasn't Israel blows up hospital, kills 500 people. Anyway, but they were ready to believe that. No, I also, I work in higher ed. So in higher ed, you have a, a wide swath, uh, swath of people. Um, some of the very pro-Israel and some of the very pro-Palestinian. In fact, the overt demonstrations we've seen on college campuses are for pro-Palestinian. And they're calling for the eradication and genocide of the Jewish people, which probably tickles Rick Wiles and his followers inside. They are genocidal, anti, anti-Jewish uh, people. Jew haters, that's what I call them. I don't use the anti-S word because they love that. Uh, and, and again, it's a wider, it's a wider range. They just hate Jews. I don't know that makes... It, I'm, I'm getting in an area that, I, that I, I'm careful about because I don't, I don't like when people just stick you in a box and say, well, you just hate black people or whatever, if, if you're critical of BLM kind of thing. Um, again, and I've broken down, uh, you know, BLM, BLM hates Jews too. So uh, <laughs> they're uh, pro-Palestinian and they've called for the eradication of Israel. And they celebrated the, uh, the torture and slaughter and rape of Israelis. They celebrated it recently too. So um, anyway, so I want to be careful with that, but I can't explain it in any way because I deal with these people and they throw out these things without any thought and it's immediately picked up. And this is true on both sides. Everybody does this and this is the danger. This is what I'm trying to teach um, whatever I can, at least people to think when they're thinking these things. Um, but again, somebody I know, social media came out and went after, uh, you know, Again, again, do you know what the Talmud says? The Talmud says, and the Talmudic Jews, they call for whatever. I'm like, you're talking about a tiny, tiny percentage of actual Jews in Israel. In Israel itself, in 2020, I think it was, I think something like 44, 45% of Israelis are secular. They're basically agnostics or atheists. A huge percentage of the population. Another 33%, the 35%, are what you call basically traditional Jews. Um, they, they practice the holidays and, and they do traditional Jewish things. They're not Orthodox. The ultra-Orthodox make up probably, again, according to this is Israeli figures in the polls, uh, about 10% of the population. And these are the ones that are most likely to be the most strident. These are the ones who do spit on Christians in Jerusalem. Uh, but again, I always say to Rick Wiles and anybody else, would you rather live in Tel Aviv <laughs> or Jerusalem and risk being spat upon, which is probably not going to happen to you, or would you want to go live in Gaza? Or do you want to go live in Mecca? Right? And, or anywhere. You want to go live in Istanbul or Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, not Constant. Nobody's business but the Turks. Um, anyway, or, or Iran. <laughs> or Riyadh, you know, if you want to go live there. Um, so again, and there, there are people who live there, Paul Americans live there. But it's, it's the idea that the state of Israel is just as dangerous or worse than Hamas or Hezbollah. And then one guy tried to come back after I gave him all the stats, another Jew hater, and uh, he came back and said, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't pick any side. I'm against all of them. Well, you know, that's lovely. Um, and that's the way he's get out of it. He doesn't seem to be criticizing them. He seems to spend all his time in Jew hate and loving Hitler and the final solution. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't understand the, the disparity in numbers. <laughs> He's picking on the Jewish population, which is relatively small in the world compared to the Arab slash Muslim population, which is not all Muslims are Arab, obviously. Um, largely the Iranians are, not they're Persians, etc. The Turks are Turks. Um, so anyway, but of, of those Muslim populations, they're enormous. <laughs> You're talking about, you know, close to 2 billion people or something like that. I know the Catholic Church is over 2 billion people, um, and they're... They're anti-Jew. I mean, the, the PLO, which called for the d- destruction of Israel and the eradication of Jews, uh, they had offices at the Vatican, and they weren't even they weren't recognized by the United States. But the Vatican gave them offices. I mean, it's just sort of thing. The, the Vatican has long been anti-Jew. Obviously, you can't deny the um, uh, cum nimis absurdum, uh, which was uh, a decree by Pope Paul IV, went on for centuries, that said Jews couldn't have, couldn't be doctors, couldn't be lawyers, couldn't have professional jobs. They had to be uh, rag pickers at best. Uh, they put them in ghettos. They made them wear yellow markers on their clothing. Does this sound uh, familiar, putting Jews in ghettos and making them wear yellow markers on their clothing and not allowing them to be doctors and lawyers and such? Uh, that sound familiar? Yeah, well, the popes did that, and they did it for centuries. Pope after pope after pope after pope after pope uh, did it for centuries. Right, and it only ended because when uh, Garibaldi defeated the Papal States, 
1871 when Italy was unified as a nation again. Remember, Italy was after after the Roman Empire went through kingdom and the kingdom of Naples and the kingdom of Spain. And it, you know where my family's from was part of the kingdom of Spain for a while. Uh, you also had the uh, Norman invasion. I mean, down there the Viking invasions. Body was sacked in 1066. As a matter of fact, to pick a year of other significance in the Western world. So, uh, again, these things are more complex. Now, Israel's in a tough spot, and, you know, I'm not, I don't support everything Israel does. You know on this podcast that I don't believe current Israel is the, the Israel of God. But that doesn't mean I don't believe that they're not, there's not a plan for Israel. There certainly is, but it has to be believing Israel. We've talked about that a lot. So that's the line I draw. But, in a practical sense, um, they're in a tough spot because... You know, they, if they if they do invade Gaza, it's going to be ugly. And I don't really think it's going to be an easy war here. And if they do invade Gaza, invade Gaza and try to occupy it, it's going to be ugly. And then you're going to have to deal with Hezbollah. Uh, and and that's a rather significant force. And then you're going to have to deal with Jordan and the West Bank again. And it's going to get ugly. And, and I don't see any real great way out of this. Now, let me <laughs> segue. And you might think there's nothing to do with it, but it does. And to Putin. Now, Putin is not a great guy. You know, as you know on this podcast, um, Russia's original objectives I thought were fine. The Russian-speaking people in the eastern provinces of very corrupt Ukraine, as the president keeps trying to call it, it's a great democracy. It's a horrifying, horrifying and corrupt place. Um, child trafficking and, and the U.S. has biolabs there. And, you know, they're pocketing the billions of dollars we're sending. They're all becoming millionaires off of us, off of our tax dollars. You know, as, as we spiral and struggle with inflation and, and the, the national debt. Uh, anyway, but I'm not saying that Putin's a great guy by any stretch. Putin does support, um, for hit for Russia's purposes, Iran in a lot of ways, uh, certainly Syria. Uh, so in a lot of ways, they are a geopolitical military uh, obstacle to the United States in certain parts of the world. But that's just the point in some ways, because George Washington said that, the United States should avoid permanent alliances and permanent enemies. And that's true, because one of the ways you make peace, one of the ways you make peace, one of the ways you make peace, is you, you bring together people and you find out what it is they really want for their nation. All right? So it doesn't mean you have to have the same goals, it doesn't mean you have to function the same. But, you know, you're not going to change a country. We're not going to invade every country and, and make it like the United States. That's what we tried to do in Iraq, and it's failed miserably and cost a lot, many lives of America, like five or 6,000 American lives, which in the grand scheme of wars is the thing, but if it's, one of, if it's your child that gets killed over there. By the way, Joe Biden's son did not die in Iraq. He keeps saying that, but he didn't. He died in a hospital in the United States of cancer. He didn't die in Iraq from the war. Anyway, besides the point. Um, <clears throat> But you're not going to do that to these cultures. Uh, they are what they are. They want to be what they are. But you want, what you do is you find out. And then you come to these agreements. And as best you can, again, these things are always tenuous. Uh, but you, you try to make these agreements as much as possible. This is when people got, and I was confused a little bit when, when Trump was over there laughing and giggling up with Kim Jong-il or Ong, whichever it is this week. Um, it was puzzling to me, I and mean, the guy's a dictator and everything. Well, we're not going to invade North Korea. The best we can do is, is we get, what does North Korea really want? <laughs> you know, that's going to keep them off of South Korea's back, off of Japan's back, and not be a pain in the ass and be expensive and everything else. It's going to cost us militarily. So, again, you can't do it. So, you, you're, not, you're not cozying up to them. You're not caving to them. You're not showing them weakness. You don't want to do that. But you, you can show them strength, but at the same time going, look, what is it that North Korea wants? Maybe we can have an agreement. Okay, we're back. Again, it's Animal Central here. And they, they, wherever you are, they want to be. So if I come outside, they come outside and they start this nonsense. Anyway, <clears throat> there we go. That's life with animals. Um, but again, so these aren't great people. Uh, but you don't appease them either. So you, when Iran comes and says, we want this and we want you to give us money and we want you, you don't appease them. You, you try to come again. This is all theoretical and easy for me to say. I get that, but in, it's a big picture thing that you can't draw the world and say we're permanently on this side and we're permanently opposed to that. And that's how you get World War Three, and that's where we're headed for World War Three because people said no matter what, we're going to be here as opposed to going to Turkey now, which is rattling their sabers in the Middle East and say Turkey, what is it you want? <laughs> now sometimes you can't. <clears throat> you know, people are. People are, are concerned about themselves. So Turkey's concerned about its 
it's national defense, etc. cetera. Uh, and everybody has their own interests, but again, you can't run the world. And we're back again. Uh, you know, you can't go anywhere. They follow you around. Now, I was going to do this out front, but it's like Nat Central out there. There's like a billion Nats out front. No, it's actually a prettier background out front. The school the sky's really blue this evening, this autumn evening in North Carolina. Anyway, <laughs> back to where we're. You can't, you have to find out what all these nations want. And you can have allies, of course, and agreements. But this is how, this is how World War I started, this is how World War II started, um, got where it is uh, because of these sorts of things. Um, and again, you have geopolitical foes. So again, I'm not saying Russia's a good guy. We have to keep an eye on Russia. They, uh, the, in some sense, you know, them depleting themselves militarily in in Ukraine helps the United States. But um, at the co what cost? The cost of $120 billion of debt that we don't have for the future? For what? To protect some god-awful, uh, to, to actually to prevent Russians who want to be part of Russia or to be independent from Ukraine because they're being persecuted by the Ukrainians. Again, I'm not saying Russia's great. I'm saying I'm worried about these people, these particular people and in the Donbass, in eastern Ukraine. So anyway, the world's a complicated place, and all these nations and people have their interests. And the best thing you can do is try to figure out what their interests are. Now, if your interest is, we want to wipe the Jews off the face of the earth, that's a very difficult thing. When I, there's no compromise there. And the other people need to listen to these people, in the United States particularly, or in, in London as well, in the UK, when they're protesting. They, just, they don't want to just kill Jews, they want to kill Christians too. So... All these people that are out there wanting to kill Jews and they love Hamas because Hamas also wants to kill Jews. They don't listen to them because they also want to kill Christians and they'd kill you as soon as they'd kill a Jew. Right? You're, an infidel, you're an infidel just as much. But the, but the, the Jewish people, the, the Talmudic Orthodox Jews is a small percentage. They don't, they, they, they're not going, they haven't killed, they're not out killing Christians in, in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, you know. Again, most of the country is secular, and that's what I'm saying. It's one of my problems with Israel. People, uh, classic dispensationalists who treat Israel like it's really the Israel of the Bible. It's not. It's certainly not. I mean, even even if it was, even if God was working through Israel now, which He's not, but He will. Even if He was, like He was in the days of Joshua or whatever, or the judges, there are times when Israel was so rebellious to God that you don't even count those years. They're Laami. They're not my people because they're in such rebellion. And even if Israel was in, uh, was center stage today, they are secular. They have homosexuality. Uh, they have pornography. Uh, again, half the country, just about half the country, is secular. Uh, some are just traditional. They don't really hold the Bible to be um, the, the Hebrew scriptures to be necessarily infallible. They're not all uh, six day creationists. Um, you know, the revolutionists and everything else. So even the Israel there today, which again, I don't think God is, is dealing with them today. He will, but not right now. Even if he was, they're not, they're not there in, in faith. Um, and again, that's just, the Lord will, will call out an Israel amongst those people to himself. And again, as I pointed out, I'll just finish with this as well. And, um, you know, they don't realize it in Matthew 25, Again, and I can't explain to them the context of all this stuff, so I'm sure when I go back and look, they're going to get it all wrong. <laughs> but when the Lord returns, and what it says in Matthew 25 for the sheep and the goats, he said, He returned, the nations will be before him. That's the word ethnos. In the King James Version, which they all worship, King James, ethnos is translated Gentiles 93 times in the Greek, in the New Testament, uh, the King James Version. So you can read Gentiles there, and it works. When the Lord comes back, he will gather the Gentiles before him. And how are they judged? They're judged, the Gentile nations are judged, or nations, either Gentiles or the Gentile nations, however you want to look at it. They are judged for how they treated the least of these, my brethren. As Jews. <laughs> That's the Lord's brethren are the Jews. We you know from Matthew 15, when the, the, uh, the Canaanite woman comes to him, calls him son of David. He won't, he won't listen to her. She doesn't know right to call him son of David. She calls him Lord. Yes, he's the Lord of the Gentiles. Sure, absolutely. But he wasn't, he wasn't son of David to them. It's their kingdom. It's Israel's kingdom. And, Ma and Acts 1, when the Lord returns, uh, he, well, they asked him he, for 40 days. He taught them the uh, enlightened apostles uh, who are promised to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. He taught them for 40 days about the kingdom. This is the risen Lord. And they had one question. Were you at this time restored to the kingdom of Israel? Basically, he teaches them for 40 days about the kingdom. 
So they know all about the kingdom because they're going to sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes. And they have one question. Are you going to do that now? You're going, we know you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Are you going to do that now? Because that's what you've been talking about for 40 days is restoring the kingdom of Israel. Will you do it now? And that's what he says. It's not for you to know the times of the seasons. So that's, but that's what he was talking about. And what does do Peter do after Pentecost? So if you want to draw your line at Pentecost, you want to draw it at the cross, at the resurrection, at Pentecost. But now we're now beyond all three of those. And Peter says to Israel, ye men of Israel, if you repent, God will send this self-same Jesus to the restoration of all things. So that whole, you can read that whole passage in, in, well, in Acts 2, and then also in Acts 3, two speeches by Peter. But Acts 3 is the one I'm referring to now specifically um, as well. And um, then when we see Gentiles grafted in, we're told why they're grafted in in Acts 8. We're told why. It's to make Israel jealous. So Israel's not the church. You can't graft in Gentiles to the church to make the church jealous. It makes no sense. Romans 9, to Israel belong the promises. To Israel belong the covenants, and to Israel belong, etc., etc., etc. Right? Israel, 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 Israel now. Again, but they're not on the clock today. That changed at the end of the book of Acts, which we've talked about previously. I'm not going to go into it here. Um, but you, I'll might link it down below or link it at the end here um, as to if you want to get a, a general idea of, of Israel's place right now. So again, I'm not carte blanching Israel. But this idea that there are people going to go find something in the Talmud and say Israel's as bad as Hamas I hate Israel. No, you just hate Jews. You just hate Jews. And if, if you if you poke them a little more, you're going to get I hate Jews out of them. You're going to get that. Again, I know that sounds like it's easy for me to say. It's, it's, it's easy for me just to cast this this whole net over the all and just say, you're just, you know, anti-Semites is what they want me to call them. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's no other explanation. When I give you the facts, when we look at it, when we step back and look at it reasonably. I'm not saying carte blanche for Israel. Obviously, I don't believe like other people believe about modern day Israel. But when we look at the situation in Israel, when we look at um, the society that at least Israel functions in and the values they have, the nation compared to the United States and the Western nations, and the butchery of some members of Hamas, Hezbollah, and the gigantic <laughs> number of Muslims in the world, not all of them, not all of them, but you're talking about a tiny sliver of people in Israel and a gigantic number of Muslims. The fact that they keep coming back and harping on Israel, harping on Israel, harping on Israel, harping on Israel, and try to make themselves martyrs, like Rick Wiles can't, can, it, like, like it's Nazi Germany and, and he's insulting Hitler, so he's going to go to a prison camp. No, you can insult Israel. You, you hate Jews and you talk about them all the time. You talk about them before this war. You, you, you hate Jews. You've been hating Jews for years, Rick. <laughs> Nobody's putting you in a prison. Nobody's doing anything to you. They don't just don't choose to listen to you. That's fine. But you've got your friends. You've got your friends at the New York Times and your friends at the Washington Post, your friends at the uh, Los Angeles Times. You've got all your friends at CNN, all your friends, Rick. They all hate Israel, too. Um, but they're not as big Jew haters as you. You hate Jews, and a lot of people on Gab hate Jews. It's, it's Jew hatred central over there. And again, do what you want with that, but I, I'm stepping back and saying I'm interested in what are the interests of the United States, and the interest of the United States is peace, right? Not war, not debt, not dead Americans. It's peace, and how do you achieve peace? You have to find out as best you can what people need, and to the point that you can, you try to get everybody to the table so you can function and live. Not always possible. I'm not saying appease. I'm not saying give Hitler everything he wants. That didn't work, obviously. But, you know, you you try, you try to maintain peace. But no, this guy hates Jews. Just hates Jews. I mean, just admit it, Rick, and the people, I, the people that I that I engage with on, on a small level, it comes out very quickly. They love, love Hitler, hate Jews. Right? And no matter what statistics you give them, no matter what reality, no matter how you give them, this is actually what's going on in Israel. This is actually the people that live in Israel. This is how Israel functions. This was actually going on in Gaza. This was actually going on in Iran and Hezbollah. They don't care. Hate Jews. They hate Jews because they hate Jews. <laughs> That's the only thing I hate Jews. So, again, and I, you know, I got issues. I don't understand why Jewish Americans, even Asian Americans, wrote so heavily Democratic. Um... Catholics vote heavily Democratic. You see all these Catholics in Congress and the Senate. And a lot of them, a majority of them are Democrats. And Jews, I think they're all Democrats. You know, and then Asian Americans vote two to one nationally for for Democrats, and they're the ones that suffer from um, uh, affirmative action in college admissions. Uh, they're the ones that that uh, suffer on 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 the belittling of IQ tests because Asians do well at universities. They do well on these IQ tests. And, you know, they are being told to sit back and let people who are not as prepared as they are, who have not achieved what they have achieved, have their positions based solely on their race. 
But again, that's a whole other issue with the Asians. I just, again, I mean, you're voting against. So when you go to Harvard and you don't get into Harvard and you have, you know, 18,000 on your SAT and you graduated with a 9.0 and uh, you wrote your dissertation in the third grade and you can't get in. Don't come crying to me. That's what you want. That's what you vote for. You vote for affirmative action. It's been struck down. I know that. But I mean, all the time they've been voting that way. Anyway, we got way off topic and we'll see you. What else to say? I mean, you know, I'm trying to be reasonable.